Mathematics Level 4, Topic 5, Financial Mathematics. Welcome to Topic 5 of the Mathematics Level 4 Support Package, Financial Mathematics. Topic 5, Financial Mathematics. Module 1, Growth Formulae. Module 1, Session 1. Session 1 will cover the introduction to Topic 5, Financial Mathematics, the subject and learning outcomes for Topic 5, pre-knowledge expected for Topic 5. Hi, I'm Ivan McPalang. Let's do Financial Mathematics. Introduction to Topic 5, Financial Mathematics. Financial Mathematics has been taught in NCV Mathematics since Level 2. Students should be very familiar with simple and compound interest by now, and with the correct preparation, they should be able to get full marks for this section. Looking at page 5 of the subject guidelines, we can see that this section of the course is weighted 10% of the curriculum, and a minimum of 7 teaching hours are required to cover the material. Lecturers we spoke to suggest that this topic should be covered in about one and a half weeks. Looking at page 26 of the assessment guidelines, we can see that financial mathematics is covered in paper 2. The topic has a weighting of 20% in the paper. So, what financial mathematics pre-knowledge should students have by the time they reach level 4? Let's look at how the finance curriculum builds from one level to the next. In level 2, students learned to plan and manage personal and household finances. They were introduced to concepts of personal finance, methods of finance and financial control, and they worked with budgets. They were also introduced to basic simple and compound interest calculations. In level 3, students again worked with financial control and budgets, this time in relation to social clubs. They also worked with more complicated problems involving simple and compound interest, working with timelines and different compounding periods. In level 4, students solidify their understanding of simple and compound interest. They learn to work with tax tables to complete tax returns, and they are introduced to problems involving simple and compound decay. Let's look more closely at the subject and learning outcomes for topic 5. We will find them on page 13 of the subject guidelines. Subject outcome 5.1 Use mathematics to plan and control financial instruments. By the end of subject outcome 5.1, your students should be able to Use simple and compound growth formulae to solve problems including Interest, higher purchase, inflation. Understand, use and interpret tax tables. Use simple and compound decay formulae to solve problems. Tax tables and the decay formulae are new content in level 4. Let's start off with an overview discussion activity where you work in groups. Pre-knowledge for Topic 5 Let's take a look at some of the pre-knowledge required. As we mentioned before, simple and compound interest have been covered in both levels 2 and level 3 and will be revised again in level 4. It is important that students understand how to manipulate equations and substitute values into them to solve. Return to your groups for another discussion activity on manipulation of formulae. Students struggle to work with formulae throughout the levels. Financial mathematics relies heavily on formulae. In your groups, Discuss how you help your students work with and manipulate formulae in mathematics. In financial mathematics, we work with formulae. Working with formulae can still be a problem area for students, even though they have been working with them since level 2. Lecturers we spoke to use one of two approaches when working with sums involving formulae. 1. Manipulate the formula by isolating the variable you are looking for on one side of the equation and then substituting known values and solve. 
or substitute straight into the given equation and then simplify and solve for the remaining unknown. Each lecturer has their preferred approach and neither is wrong. Both also have their own advantages and disadvantages. When manipulating first, we end up with all the known variables on one side of the equation. We can enter this into a calculator all at once to find the solution. However, students really struggle to manipulate equations and if they make a mistake with the manipulation, they end up with zero marks for the question. When substituting first, they have a better chance to earn marks along the way for each step. This lecturer describes his approach to working with formula. And the other thing is, besides that, they also ask questions, ask questions like, where they give you everything and then they want you to find the interest rates. <whistles> oh, they substitute and they went into a jungle and they get lost. And they never, it becomes just more and more darker. Is because they lack the skill of manipulation. Now what I do is, I give them a summary of all the different formulas and the different case scenarios that we will get. And then when they ask interest rates, for example, say, they just go straight to that formula, substitute one shot on your calculator and get the answer. I don't expect them to get substitute inside the formula because yo, it's Greek, I'm telling you. It's Greek that you see there. And they never got to the answer. So it's important that we highlight these things. Manipulate, give them an activity on manipulation where you give that as an exercise so that they can get used to the different formulas and then they'll be able to sort it out.